Okay, I believe we are on the air. Hello and welcome everyone, wherever you are, whenever you are, uh, for a special presentation of Grapefruit League action. It's the Baltimore Orioles playing the Boston Red Sox today. Hi, I'm Steve, a.k.a. The Bird Watcher. Thanks for finding my channel. Uh, I'm going to be calling uh, the game today, play by play. And uh, yeah, we're going to be hanging out, watching some Orioles baseball for the third straight uh, early, early morning for me. Hey, Card, are you still in the chat? Card, Earth to Card, or anyone else that might be in chat right now, please let me know if my audio is sounding okay. Am I coming in loud and clear? I don't wear headphones. It's a, I can't, I can't put those on my ears. Anyway, yes. Uh, so uh, we've got today a matchup. Audio is fine, fantastic. At Jet Blue Jet Blue Park in Fort Myers, Florida, it's the Red Sox spring training facility, and uh, I'll be going over the pitching matchups and the starting lineups here as quickly as I can. There's only a few minutes till first pitch. Uh, Masson is actually on my screen. I can't believe it. It's Orioles coverage with, with Orioles commentators and Orioles uh, 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 Orioles stuff. <laughs> Melanie Newman's on right now. And they're going over some of the highlights from yesterday. Right, so <clears throat> excuse me. today we don't exactly have a marquee pitching matchup. We had a couple of starters yesterday against the Phillies uh, that we'll be seeing in both rotations. Um, Dean Kramer for the Orioles and Taiwan Walker for the Phillies. Today, however, uh, might be a battle of the, uh, you know, long man slash am I going to even make the team players? Albert Suarez on the mound for the Orioles to start things off. A one and one record in the spring, 6.35 ERA. He's up against Cooper Criswell of the Red Sox. And I can't wait to butcher some other Red Sox names today as I get to know some of my bitter rivals and some of their fringe players. You got to know those fringe players. I've been going around telling everybody else in the division about the Orioles' uh, fringe players. But see, our fringe players are going to be good. Kobe Mayo, everybody. Get him on the team. All right, uh, here's today's starting lineup for the Orioles. We have Gunnar Henderson hitting leadoff, playing short. Anthony Santander in the two-hole in right field. Ryan Mountcastle about third and play first. Jordan Westberg in the cleanup spot at third base. They've played him everywhere in the lineup. Uh, Colton Kowser uh, batting uh, fifth, playing center. Tyler, Nevin, Tyler Nevins in left field. Uh, Colton Wong, the veteran, is at second base. Ryan McKenna, I got to think... The Orioles are just doing them a favor at this point. I think they're like, look, we're going to put you in a couple more games, give you a few more chances to maybe impress, if not us, another team maybe, because your days here uh, might be numbered quite literally. Uh, your day might be numbered, to be honest. Uh, Perez, the catcher, batting ninth. And let me run on over to the Red Sox uh, Twitter, see if their lineup is posted. Uh, do 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 Hey, Card Crazed is here. Anyone else is here, uh, don't uh, be shy. Sound off. It's always nice to know that there's people around <laughs> when you're a brand new uh, channel without a whole lot of people watching. Right. Uh, we have for your Boston Red Sox. Not yours, not mine anyway, but if you're a Red Sox fan. Uh, playing center field and leading off Jaron Duran. Uh, Raphael Devers at third. Trevor Story will hit third, play short. Tristan Casas playing first, batting cleanup. The DH is Tyler O'Neill. Masataka Yoshida in left field. Sedan Rafaela uh, in second. Will your Abreu in right. Connor Wong is the catcher. And again, on the mound, Cooper a Cresswell. All right. So once again, I'll be uh, going with the tried and true <laughs> Yahoo Sports uh, animation background. Actually, let's get to that game channel one. That one was better. 
This is better. Chris Well, well, they did just flash his spring stats up on the screen, but they already went away. Apparently, this game's already underway. As I see the first pitch is up on the board, and yet it has not happened for me. So let me just take this moment to sip a little bit of coffee here as it's currently 5.06 a.m. where I stand. If you care about who's uh, the umpires, uh, I feel bad for you. There's no Angel Hernandez, I'll tell you that. Jonathan Parra is your home plate umpire. The other guys, doesn't really matter. It's 80 degrees in this game. Humidity at 56%. Wind is blowing out to center, 7 miles an hour. Forecast is mostly cloudy, but no uh, talk of any rain. That's good to hear. That's been a pretty fortunate part of this spring. I don't think there have been any rainouts, at least not for the Orioles. All right, we're about to get underway here. Gunnar Henderson is stepping into the batter's box. Chris Well kicks and deals the first pitch, and it's taken for a called strike. We are underway here at JetBlue Park. The next pitch is swung on and missed. Gunner chased a low pitch and came up empty, 0-2. Of course, the Red Sox with their home jerseys on. Uh, they don't put the names on the back of their home jerseys, so it's going to be even more difficult for a non-Red Sox fan, especially once we get into these uh, fringe players in the later innings. But Chriswell wears number 64. Uh, that's a ball, and now the next pitch is a check swing foul off to the left. One ball and two strikes as we're just getting started here. Orioles-Red Sox. And whenever I get some time, I guess I'm going to need to look up some info on whatever this Shohei Otani interpreter betting story is all about. This one's in the dirt and the count even up at two and two. Card or anyone else that's here, if you've got a way to give me what I, I, I've heard, here's the next pitch, and that's a call. Strike three, a nice pitch on the outside corner that had a little dip on it right at the knees. And Gunner is retired on strikes. The backwards K for Chriswell. Yeah, nice pitch, nice location there. Even if Gunnar got a bat on that ball, unless he was specifically looking for that pitch, he wouldn't be able to do much. Here's Santander, and he takes a first pitch strike. Chris Well working pretty quickly here. The next pitches are all the way. <laughs> I can't even. I got to drink more coffee. The next pitch is already on its way, and uh, it's taken up and in for ball one. One ball, one strike to Santander. Last year hit 257, 28 homers, 95 RBI. This one's low, two and one. Uh, Chriswell works fast. Hey, maybe I can get a game today that's under three hours. That would be that would be that'd be great. The two one. Popped foul behind the plate. Two and two. Wow, this might be the worst turnout yet. One viewer. <laughs> Thank you, one viewer. Hey, one's infinitely better than none, right? I, I, I was taught that in a math class at some point. Here comes the 2-2 to Santander, and it's popped up in the left field, and the fielder turning around, looking up, and this ball is going to fly out of here. Bye-bye, birdie. The Orioles, once again... Wait a minute, Santander is being told to go back. Oh, no. Wait, what's going Is there a little, a little bit of prankster? What's happening here? The third base umpire pointed at Santander as if to say go back to second base, but I, he's laughing. I think he's joking. Santander went opposite field. There is a sort of mini green monster here at the Jet Blue Park facility for Boston. That ball sailed, and I guess it hit the very top of the wall because, yes, indeed, Santander is standing on second base. I'm glad I didn't yell out bye-bye birdie. I don't think I did. Uh, 
Yeah, that ball hit just off the top of that uh, sort of, uh, what do you call it? replica green monster. So Santander with a one-out double, and here's Ryan Mountcastle. And after taking one ball, the next one is low for ball two. 2-0 two and oh on Mountie. Tony Taters didn't quite tater that one. He's at second. The pitch is in there. Two balls and one strike. I mean, Santander was already trotting to third base. And, I mean, the ball never landed. Actually, you know what might have ha Oh, I see what happened. At the very top of this wall, there's a standing room only section where you can lean over that wall. A kid leaned over Jeffrey Mayer style and caught the ball over, like leaned over with the glove. The ball would have hit the very top of that wall. The kid caught the ball with the glove. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. So it goes down as a double. Here's a foul ball from Ryan Mountcastle. Yeah, so now I'm getting traumatic uh, flashbacks of Jeffrey Mayer. All right, I mean, if you're going to steal an Orioles home run, how about you do it in the spring? That's fine. I can I can live with that. Mountcastle puts this one into play deep into left center. Here's a diving attempt, and is that ball caught? It is indeed by the center fielder on the track, but it was an awkward catch. He gets up gingerly. Santander is able to tag and go to third. But there should be two outs now. Yes, indeed. Two outs. Ryan Mountcastle hits the ball to center field and making an excellent catch on the track. But falling awkwardly is the Red Sox center fielder, uh, Duran. And let's hope he, they're showing him uh, walk around out there. He's trying to walk it off. Seems to be okay. Runner third and two down now. And here comes Jordan Westberg. He takes low and in for ball one. So a couple of very well hit balls, but Chris Well still able to maybe get out of this with just a double and a, a long out. Runner at third, two down. The count is now two and zero oh on Westberg. And the pitch is taken on the outside edge for a called strike two and one. I can't believe I said bye bye birdie when it wasn't. A, you know, I, I I need to turn the sound up a little bit on the TV. I just don't want it to bleed in the microphone. I'm trying to respect all the rules of fair use and all that copyright. Uh, two and two the count now on Westberg, but. Uh, yeah, if I have the volume all the way down, if I can't hear the sound of the ball off the bat, here's a swing and a miss on what looked like a slider low and away. Uh, no chance for Westberg on that one. He strikes out to win the inning. The Orioles get a double, but leave Santander stranded at third. At the end of half an inning, it's the Orioles nothing and the Red Sox coming up. Mm. Oh, the coffee. Whew. Card. Card, we got to talk, man. You, Card, you got to hold my hand through this, man, if you're the only one here. Hey, Don, what's going on, guys? Guys, you're going to have to hold my hand through this. 5.15 a.m. where I am. And even though I got up at 4.15, figured 45 minutes was enough time to shower up, get the stream set up, and I, I set up everything I could before I went to sleep. And then maybe run down to the 7-Eleven and get, you know, an iced latte and some sort of snack or breakfast thing. But no, I've just got one cup of instant coffee and uh, nothing else. <laughs> and uh, that's why I'm praying it's not a three-hour game because, oof. How you doing, Don C.? Okay, it looks like there's already been one out posted here. So, uh, yeah, the Yahoo page, stat tracker, faster than it was yesterday. 
Folks, if you want to hear the game called properly, just listen to the sound of my voice. This visual is simply, you know, a backup plan, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Wow. Okay, Albert Suarez. Uh, who uh, played in Korea last season, had a 100, 108 innings and a whip of 1.49 ERA, just under four, trying to make this team as a long man out of camp. First pitch is swung on a miss. He's shown some good strikeout stuff here in the spring, and that first pitch uh, was a tough one to Duran. Here's the 0-1 to Duran, and this one's up and away, one ball, one strike. So that's sort of what's drawn the attention of uh, the Orioles staff here is the sort of strikeout potential Albert Suarez has. This one's up and away two and one. Hey, Sean, welcome. Suarez's 2-1 pitch is tapped back to the mound and Suarez will toss it to first. And Duran is retired. One to three. One up, one down here in the bottom of the first. The Orioles once again uh, defensively. Nevin, Kowser, Santander left to right in the outfield. Westberg at third. Henderson at short. Wong at second. Mounty at first. Perez behind the plate. And, of course, Albert Suarez on the mound. Here's Rafael Devers. First pitch to him is a big swing, and that ball's drilled in the right field. And Santander, it's right at him. He makes the catch as he falls down. It's not going to be a pretty play on the highlight reel. But Santander, I don't believe he lost it in the sun. There's some cloud cover out there. He just fell down. He took one step to his right and fell down. But luckily, the ball <laughs> just... Kind of landed in his glove. My goodness. That was uh, a fortunate event for Santander. One away. Excuse me, two away. And the batter now, Trevor Story. He takes a first pitch strike. Story. Story. Hoping for big things after playing in just 43 games last season. Barely hitting the Mendoza line. 2-0-3. This pitch is a little bit off the plate. One ball and one strike. Two down, nobody on bottom of the first, no score. And the one one, the story is swung on a mist. Some filthy movement on some of these pitches from Suarez. You can see why uh, he's still in camp. I say that with the notion that you look at who the Orioles still have down down in Florida, they got to start making some cuts, you would think, in the next day or two. Here's a swing and a tapper back toward the middle. There's no chance for Gunner. Yeah, Story's going to leg that one out for an infield hit. Gunner made it a close play, and uh, he's got a big smile on his face. I think he's happy with the attempt he made. He charged the ball and got off a strong, accurate throw, but the ball was hit just too slowly, and Story got down the line. Beating it out for an infield single. Two down, runner at first, and that'll bring up Tristan Cassis. All right. Hey, no no worries, Don. I, I didn't know 100% uh, if Card was a brother or a sister or what the deal was. Cassis. He had a fine rookie season, played in 132 games, 24 homers, 65 driven in. Left-handed batter. The 0-1 to him is outside, one ball and one strike. Plus, he's got the kind of name that's just really fun to pronounce when he got a Boston accent. Tristan Cassis at the plate. Come on, Cassis. Here's the 1-1, one, one, and that's just a bit outside. 2-1. and one. 
Here's a highlight from Tuesday's game where Cassis went very, very deep. He's got power, and he's young. He's definitely the Red Sox best young uh, hitting talent. This one's uh, going to be hit on the ground to first. Mountcastle fields it and will just take a couple of steps over to tag the first base bag to win the inning. The Red Sox get a hit but leave uh, Trevor Story on base. And at the end of one inning, it's no score here. Where are we? What town is this in? Is it Bradenton? Where is this? Where is this Jet Blue Park? Jet Blue. Jet Blue. By the way, Jet Blue. You might want to get a better. You might want to get a better uh, sponsor. Aren't they like notoriously the worst airline ever? Oh, Fort Myers. Okay. Holds 10,823 people. Yeah, today's game brought to you by JetBlue. JetBlue. For when you want to travel and whatever the opposite of comfort is. JetBlue. All right. Oh, by the way, here's some news to go over during the commercial. The five-man rotation for the Orioles has been set. So I guess I can kiss my idea of ha making Cole Irvin uh, a long man and going with a four-man rotation is going to uh, not happen. But there's a way to do it because you can start Irvin. You can start Burns on the second and just skip Irvin because that's he'll have four days rest. There's a day off after the first game. So just, yeah, I want Corbin Burns on the mound every fifth day. Why not? Why not? He's 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 a workhorse. Uh, he sh this guy should be getting us 200-some innings. If he can make us 34, 35 starts, do it. Uh, but anyway, uh, one thing I did predict is that Tyler Wells is ahead of Dean Kramer, at least in terms of how the rotation is going to start. It makes sense to me. Wells just, we understand he's not like Kramer in terms of going to be in the rotation from start to finish. He just doesn't have the innings in him to do it. But when he is in the rotation, he was putting up better numbers than Kramer last season. And in fact, he was really tough to hit. So, yeah, I like to see him in there as the number three guy. Kramer fourth and then Irvin fifth. So there you go. A little something there as we get back underway in the top of the second. Colton Kowser's at the plate, and there's already a 1-1 count on him. Kowser yesterday, interesting day. First three at-bats, struck out all three times, and in those three at-bats, probably swung and missed a total of about nine times. It was rough to look at. And then he comes up for one last plate appearance and hits a 446-foot home run or something to that nature it's three and one on him right now so nice recovery there from Kowser. He's had a great spring and looks set to make the team out of camp swinging a miss on that three one pitch however and the count runs full the payoff pitch is swung on a miss Kowser went after a pitch that started about couple inches above the zone and then dipped all the way down to about one inch off the ground. That had a lot of movement on it late. I'd like to know what the arsenal is on this Chriswell. I can't tell what that pitch is. I mean, it could be a splitter. It's definitely got that kind of movement. Here's Tyler Nevin. 0-1 oh, oh the count on him. This one's low and away. Ball one. One ball, one strike, one down, nobody on in the top of the second. No score here in Fort Myers, Florida. This one is off the plate, two and one. The next pitch is tapped back in front of the plate, and Chris Well will field, throw to first, two away. Chriswell looks pretty sharp uh, outside of <laughs> Santander's blast off the top of the wall. 
Gunnar Henderson, to be fair, also hit one pretty deep for an out. But, uh, yeah, it's either been two balls barreled up. He's thrown 33 pitches. Two pitches have been barreled up. The other 31 have either been well located or just showing, you know, nice movement on the pitch. I, I like the, I like what I see in here in Chriswell. Here's uh, the 0-1 pitch to, who's that, Nevin. That's tapped back to short. And they'll throw out Nevin to win the inning. So there, two fine innings of work so far for Chriswell. Three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the second. Still scoreless here in Fort Myers. Let's see. There was another uh, update, I believe, on this uh, Rock Kabatko uh, update. Yeah, again, if he see if he put Cole Irvin, uh, if you bumped Cole Irvin one more day and just made him spot start on the third, which is the third game against the Royals, that's the only time you need him until the following next weekend against the Brewers, which is like the six, the third, the fourteenth game of the season. We only need him to pitch one of the first fourteen games. So my deal is, well, then just keep him out there as a long man in the pen, but the one game you need him to pitch, just, you know, don't use him for maybe the th two, three games, before, you know. Use him sparingly here before that first time we need him. And then after that, yeah, just use him out of the pen. And if you do that, I feel like the Orioles could go with an extra position player if they wanted to, which would solve a lot of our questions and concerns. And at least buy us a couple of weeks. You can take a flyer like on a guy like Mayo. You know, maybe the Orioles uh, front office is looking at it and going, well, maybe Mayo would be great to have, but uh, we just can't figure out how to make the space for him. Well, uh, one less pitcher just for a couple of weeks. If Mayo sticks, that's a great problem to have. Figure, that, figure it out after that. Otherwise, uh, you can send him back down after giving them a chance, and let them know. Like, hey, look, we're we're not expecting you to go crazy. You know, don't feel too much pressure. This is sort of a thank you for kicking so much butt. Uh, you know, if you stick, you stick. If you don't, you know, you're going to be up here for good eventually. Plus, we're facing a lot of right-handed or left-handed pitchers. We the, uh, the Angels already have announced... Their opening day starter. I say already. Most teams have announced. Suarez has a 2-0 count here on, uh, is that Tyler O'Neill at the plate? Or is that, who is that? Or is that you? Yeah, that's uh, Tyler O'Neill and the count 2-1. and 2-1 one. and one on O'Neill. And the next pitch from Suarez. Swung on and missed. Some good heat there. I mean, we don't even get a uh, a speed, uh, a, a radar gun. We don't know velocity on pitches, nothing. No info. Old school baseball coverage. This one's a little bit high, and the count runs full. Three and two on Tyler O'Neill, leading off the bottom of the second. And the payoff pitch is... In there, called strike three, and boy, that was a nasty pitch. That ball had a late movement on it. Looked like maybe a, like a, was that a cutter? It was either a four-seam fastball that just had some downward trajectory or there was a little bit of a cutting action on it as it moved a little bit off the plate from the right-hand pitcher there, from the right-handed hitter there. Boy, I swear to God, this this idea of waking up like in the middle of the night and feeling like I'm ready to broadcast, I'm, I need time to get to wake up. Here's a, here's a Yoshida, Matasaka Yoshida at the plate. It's a one and one on him. I mean, I am mush mouthed early in the morning, I tell you. The one one is a, oh, come on. Where was that? I mean, the catcher set up on the outside 
part of the plate, but I mean, he set up a target, it hit the target, and the glove is on the plate. So where was it? Don't know, but here's another ball, ball three. Three and one on Yoshida. One away, base is empty, bottom of the second. The pitch is swung on and popped foul behind the plate. And another full count. Whew. Did you see my last message when he ended? Oh, Sean, I'm sorry. I'm just now reading it now. Sorry, Sean. Hey, hey guys, even though there's very little chat activity, please uh, forgive me if it takes me a minute to uh, recognize. Uh, this is a ground ball to second. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That's a routine play for Wong. He throws out Yoshida, and there are two away. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, they're going over the uh, professional career here of Albert Suarez. He's 34 years old out of Venezuela. Last time he was in the majors was in September of 2017 with the Giants. He's played in the MVP NPB in Japan. He's also played professionally in Korea. So if there's one thing you can say about the Suarez guy is that this dude loves to pitch. I mean, you're 34 years old. You're bouncing around the world looking for a job. A lot of guys would probably call it a day. Here's a ball hit hard, and it's going to go off that wall in left field. Again, trying for two for some reason. And wait, the call is safe. The ball beat the runner by a mile. Connor Wong must have missed the tag. Let's go over what happened there. Rafaela on the first pitch, lined a ball off the left field wall. Again, it's sort of a replica of the green monster at Fenway. It was hit so hard, and of course, it's a shallow left field out there. Uh, it was fielded perfectly by Nevin, and he throws a strike to second base. Wong is standing there with the glove down, waiting to tag the runner who hadn't even started sliding yet, and somehow Wong just flat out missed the tag? And now here's a ball hit up into the center field, right center field gap, and that's going to score a run. I want to know what happened on that. Th what? What? Will your Abreu with a hard hit ball into right center field. And the Red Sox take the lead one to nothing. As Rafaela comes in to score. But what in the world happened on that single? He tried to stretch into two. I mean, he was so far out. It was like. I'm sure anyone listening to my voice has seen Major League like 800 times. You know how Willie Mays Hayes tries to go sliding into second base and comes up like 10 feet short and the guy just smiles and tags him on the helmet? That's how far away he was from the bag. Here's a grounder to second, or excuse me, to short. Henderson will flip it to second for the force to win the inning. But the Red Sox get on the board with a RBI single from Willier Abreu. At the end of two, it's one nothing Red Sox. And I want more information about what happened on that play at second base. The ball beat him by a full second and a half. I mean, that may sound like nothing, but in terms of a play somewhere at a bag, it's, that's an eternity. Connor Wong had time to, like, do a jumping jack and then tag the runner. I, I don't know. I mean, it was just, what happened? I don't know that's the sort of play anyone would have put up on Twitter, but, my God, that didn't make any sense. Who, who would even post it? The Orioles wouldn't post such a thing. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Who's got some video? I want to see somebody mention something about that play. That don't make no sense. Raffaella scorched one off the monster and he went for second. Looked out by a mile, but a gorgeous slide gives him the bag. But the sli he overslid. He didn't even hold the bag. I'm telling you right now. Uh, Raffaella came in to score on a uh, Willier Abreu RBI single, Thomas. 
and uh, it's a bunch of malarkey. This, you better be glad this isn't the regular season, or else I'd I'd be giving you hell right now because Raffaella was out by a mile trying to stretch a single into a double. He hit a ball off that left field wall down there. Your little replica green monster, and he tried to go to for second base. The ball beat Raffaella to second base by a mile. The second baseman was just holding the ball down near the bag, waiting for Raffaella to slide in. And somehow, he's safe. I don't know. I don't know. But here we go. Top of the third. Ryan McKenna will lead it off, and he hits a comebacker to the pitcher, who will flip it to first for the out. Ryan McKenna, your days are numbered, sir. I have a feeling the organization is saying, look, we appreciated your uh, contribution uh, to the franchise. Uh, you've been working hard ever since you joined the organization. But uh, you're coming to the end of your line here. We're going to give you a couple of games in the lineup, give you a chance to do something, maybe uh, show another team you're worth uh, claiming because we're about to cut you. We're about to cut you. Top of the order again. Or excuse me, no, the number nine hitter is uh, Martin Perez. Excuse me, Michael Perez. I'll get something right eventually. Michael Perez, who is sort of the number three catcher in the Orioles' depth chart. He hits a ground ball to second. That's a routine play. And there are quickly two down. Chriswell, looking good here through two and two-thirds innings. Yeah, Chris Wells uh, looked good, Thomas. He did give up a really well-hit ball to Santander. It's probably a home run in most ballparks, but it hit off the top of that fake green monster. Actually, it didn't hit the top. It went into the glove of a fan who was at the very top of the wall leaning over. It caught that ball on the fly. Gunnar Henderson at the plate. This one's up and away. I missed the first pitch of the at-bat. The count is one-on-one one right now. Chris Wells working so fast. The next pitch is lined on the ground, and the first baseman backhands flips to the pitcher. And, I mean, it looks like spring training drills out there right now. Chris Wells making it look easy. Gunners retired. The Orioles go three up, three down in a hurry. We go to the bottom of the third. It's the Orioles nothing. The Red Sox one. Chriswell is dealing. Is Chriswell uh, expected to make the rotation, Thomas? It is the Florida version. It is. I mean, here's what it looks like. There you go. There you go. There's. And I'll point right where Santander hit the ball. Santander hit the ball like right there. You see my little cursor? And somebody standing right here had a glove and like caught it right over the, right over there. It just missed going out. That, that would have been a home run in any ballpark except Fenway. I mean, it makes sense for your spring training facility to have a wall like that. You know, you want your uh, left fielders to practice playing balls off the wall, right? Uh, any other information worth going over here? Again, when I'm calling these games early over here, I'm logging on and getting everything ready to go without actually reading up on the... Thomas, I, I want to hear more about this uh, Otani situation. So the deal is Otani's interpreter took like $4 million of Otani's money without Otani knowing? Or is it that Otani was knowingly spotting this dude the money which if that were the case isn't that his business i don't know what's the controversy like is there an ethical dilemma i don't understand i mean if the dude flat out stole money then he's a criminal i get it <laughs> otherwise what's the problem uh bottom of the third and we're underway again first pitch is popped foul and back into the stands we're back at the top of the order here for the Red Sox and Jaron Duran, who grounded out back in the first. 
Hey, if I butcher any of these Red Sox names, Thomas, let me know. Oh, and won the count on Duran. Here's a pitch upstairs, one ball and one strike. You still don't know much about that whole situation. Yeah, I've only gotten sort of the headlines. I'm just trying to make sense out of it because, again, uh, the only thing that is like, you know, sort of scandalous is if the interpreter took the money without Otani's knowledge. And if that's the case, well, Otani's not, hasn't done anything wrong. If Otani gave the interpreter the money knowingly, then who cares? So he spends his money like MC Hammer. That's his business. If you want to throw millions of dollars around uh, to your entourage or whatever, like, you know, you can sit there and scoff at it, but who cares, All right? I don't know. Oh, I think part of it was that it was out in California. I think that's what it was because California betting is still uh, not legalized like it is. And I would like to know what the other states are where, you know, all the sports betting that's gone crazy. Here's a swing and a miss by Duran, by the way. He strikes out. Forgive me for not giving you every uh, pitch of that at bat. But this is an interesting conversation to have. Uh, what are what are the other uh, parts of the country where the uh, sports betting gone wild is, is not legal yet? I thought, I, you know, I thought once it was legal, I didn't know some states still held back. I think it's smart on California's part. I really don't think it's a good idea to make I think we had it right. It was semi-legal before. You could do it if you really wanted to do it. Right? Devers at the plate, by the way, and he fouls this pitch off. It's one ball and one strike on him. One out, nobody on here in the bottom of the third. one nothing Red Sox over the Orioles. This is the 39th pitch from Suarez, and it's off the plate outside. Two balls and one strike. The next pitch is hit on the ground to the right side. Mountcastle will field, flip it to Suarez, who covers the bag. That's probably the fourth grounder to first flip to the pitcher play between these two teams in the first two and a half innings. It really does look like spring training drills in this game. Two outs here in the bottom of the third, and that'll bring up Trevor Story. Story had a base hit back in the first. I don't know exactly what states don't have lead. Okay, maybe I'll look it up here between innings. This game's going a lot faster, knock on wood, than the last two games have. Trevor Story. Mm. Mm -mm. This one swung on and fouled back. One and one the count on Story. Base is empty, two down. The pitch is swung on and missed. Some nice downward action on that pitch from Suarez. And the count one and two. All right. Here we go for the next pitch. Ooh, this one's upstairs. You can catch some highlights from the Padres and Dodgers this morning. Yamamoto, yeah, my, I was up. That Those games in Seoul, they, they start at 5 p.m. my time. So very easy to watch those games for me. And I, did, I didn't see uh, the Yamamoto inning uh, in real time because I was doing something else. But it was like right after the inning ended, I logged on and I saw yeah, he got rocked. 3-2 pitch to Story is fouled off to the left and we'll do it again. Yeah, so far, I mean, the Dodgers lost, right? It was something like 15-11 to 11 Padres. Was that the final for that game too? So they split the series? It's just a two-game series, right? 
They're done. The three two is again fouled back. So if you're in Dodger land, has it been a great start to the season? I mean, you go all the way out to the other side of the world and you split two games in one of them, you give up 15 runs. Yeah, you're 15-11. That's what I thought. So, yeah, your ace goes out there. Can only, yeah, all right. So confirming everything, I, I, I just wasn't 100% sure, but thanks for confirming. And this pitch is in there, called strike at the top of the zone. Story on a 3-2 pitch takes a called strike three. Suarez, I like this guy. 34, and he looks all, he looks about 40 out there. I'll, I'll be honest, but I like it. I want an old, an old arm on this team. Is that, is that crazy for me to say? So, yeah, if you're in Dodger Nation, has this been a good start to your season? You go one and one, and in the game you lose, you give up 15 runs. You go out and make the big pitching splash acquisition with Yamamoto. He gets lit up. Uh, now you got this Otani story going on. That's uh, not good optics. I mean, maybe the Dodgers, uh, you know, it's amazing how fast – a team can show uh, some of their uh, some of the cracks. I'm sure the Dodgers will be fine, but uh, that's why you play those games. That's why you play those games. I can't wait to see who the surprise team will be this year. I would say it'll be interesting to see. If one of the teams that are expected to do really well, like say the Mets last year, or the Padres last year, who, who that team is going to be. Obviously, I don't want it to be my team. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. Oh, boy. Why do I have to be so far behind? I already know Santander is going to fly out to start the inning. Man, get this uh, Criswell guy out of here. This dude's good. Yeah, that, that's what I was asking. Thomas, is, is Chriswell uh, expected to be in the rotation or not? Because he should be. I mean, the Red Sox talk about how they need to sign a pitcher, but uh, if you got five, if you need five guys, this ought to be one of them if you're looking for somebody. Look at that first pitch to Santander in the outside corner called strike. And the next one, uh, that one's just off the plate, but a really a great location. I mean, Chriswell really seems to be putting the ball precisely where he wants to, even if it's a little bit off the plate. This one's low and in, two balls and a strike. And I'm sure he's being a little more careful here with Santander, considering Santander is the guy that hit the hardest ball off of him in the game. The 2-1 pitch is swung on and hit in the air, right field, high fly ball, and making the catch in right center is Duran, one away. A lot of room out there. Chriswell just looks locked in. He just looks locked in. He, he looks like he's playing a regular season game, the way he they're, I got a long camera shot of him right now going through his routine here between batters. And you can just see it. You can just see he's sort of in that pitcher mentality that you see once things really start to count. First pitch to Mountcastle's in there for a strike. And again, first pitch strike to pretty much everyone. Swing and a miss strike too. Can you tell me, Thomas, about Chris Wells' arsenal? What's this pitch he's got that just – drops the bottom drops out is it a splitter it has uh, the look of a splitter it seems it doesn't feel like a sinker Lef looks more like a splitter to me here's one though Mountcastle finally hey he barrels it up that ball is going to get stroked off that monster out and left and he will make it a second base on a close play there so a one out double for Ryan Mountcastle and, yes, the Orioles haven't done much off of Chriswell, but when they have barreled it up, they have barreled it up. 
That ball was hit hard off of that monster, that baby monster. Uh, I think this is, I mean, I say it now. Maybe he's the sort of pitcher that once he gets around 60 pitches just falls apart and he can't really tolerate that as a starter. Uh, here's a pitch popped up by Westberg in foul ground. The first baseman, Cassis, will make the play. So Westberg is retired quietly, and there are two down. Mountcastle still at second base, representing the tying run in this one nothing game. Is it a sinker? Sinker, usually the movement is later and not as pronounced. This one, like, it's more of like a like a hard curve looking splitter where it's like the dip action on it is there's a there's a lot of movement on that pitch. Here's Colton Kowser. Owen won the count on him. Mountcastle at first or excuse me at second and a swing and a miss. That one was lowing in on Kowser. And I like this Criswell guy. Thomas, all is not lost for your Red Sox. I think this guy might be good. This one's lowing in. And after a look at second, here comes the next pitch, and that swung on and missed. My goodness. There's that same, I mean, that is some nasty stuff. That pitch is working. That that can't be a sinker, whatever that was. That there's way the movement's too. There's too. It's it's breaking almost like a curveball, but harder like a splitter. This one's fouled off to the right. One and two. The count on Kowser. Chris Wells is the only pitcher Boston signed that isn't hurt. He, so he wasn't a Red Sox last year? Who, who, what team was he on? How did they get him? And what do they have to do to get him? Because uh, this looks like an arm that could uh, help out a team. Swing and a miss. Look at that. So Kowser strikes out Chris Well, Yeah, he gives up another hard hit ball. But he's only given up two hits here through four innings. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. The Red Sox still lead this one, one to nothing. Four fine innings of work from Chriswell so far, keeping this hot Oriole lineup relatively quiet. Again, the two balls they did uh, hit, they hit very hard. They were both for extra bases. And Gunnar Henderson also hit a ball very well to the deepest part of the park. But Duran made a nice catch out there. Otherwise, let's see, that would be three of the, let's see, he's gone through the lineup, uh, so that's nine plus one, two, three, four, five. So he's faced 14 batters, and 11 of the 14 batters he's faced have pretty much looked helpless up there. I'll put it that way. The other three, they they got some good wood on the ball, but it's that's it. Either you get good wood on it, or you're not hitting it. Let's see what's shaking over here. I still want to see that one play at second base, though. What happened on that Rafaela ball off the wall that he was so out? If that were a regular season play, I would still be, like, pulling my hair out, going, how the hell are you calling him safe? Looks like we'll never know. So once again, the Orioles did announce that their rotation is set. Burns will start opening day. Grayson Rodriguez, Grayson Rodriguez will pitch game two against the Angels. Tyler Wells is the third starter, pitches the final game against L.A. And then the Royals series will begin with Dean Kramer in game one and Cole Irvin in game two, although he could be skipped a day and allow Burns to pitch on his normal rest. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I play the show and I go through my franchise mode, my ace 
pitches every five days, and my fifth starter gets moved with every opportunity. That's the way I operate. Here's Cassis up here to start the bottom of the fourth, and one and one the count on him. Chris was on the Rays last year and was DFA'd. He had an ERA of 5.73. Hey, good signing, man. Good signing. 1-1 one, one pitch to Cassis is a little bit inside. 2-1. and one. We're in the bottom of the fourth with a one nothing Red Sox lead over the Orioles. Pitched by Suarez is fouled off the leg of Casas. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff man here in the bottom of the fourth. Looks like there's only one other game going on right now. The Blue Jays taking on the Pirates. Toronto with a 3 0 lead at the end of three. The 2 2 to Casas is upstairs, three balls and two strikes. As we get a shot of Jackson Holiday leaning over the dugout railing, and I can confirm and report to anyone listening that today he looks about 16 years old. Yesterday I thought he looked about 17. Now he's back to looking about 16. I think by 2037, he might look like an adult. All right. The 3-2 pitch is swung on and hit well. Left center field, but it's hanging up long enough for Kowser to chase it down near the track. And Cassis is retired. Tyler O'Neill is up next with one away here in the bottom of the fourth. Oh, I can hear some birds outside. That means, yes, it's two minutes till 6 a.m. local time for me. I'll be able to open up this awful, oh, this ball is barreled up. This ball is hit hard and down the left field corner. It's going to be for extra bases. Tyler O'Neill will glide in a second with a stand-up one-out double. That ball was that ball was barreled up. Nice swing there. Is that McKenna out and left? Oh, McKenna's DHing. Oh, it's Nevin. Nevin's out and left. All right, here's Yoshida up with one out and a runner at second. First pitch from Suarez is upstairs for ball one. So the Red Sox with a one nothing lead and looking to add on. Runner in scoring position. For Matasaka Yoshida. The pitch. Low and away. 2-0. and oh. Come on, Suarez. Let's bear down here. This will be the 60th pitch of the afternoon for Suarez. Here in the fourth. And this one is a little bit outside. So he's fallen behind 3-0 and to Yoshida. There is a base open. It would set up a double play situation. Rafaela is on deck, but Rafaela probably rather difficult to double up. So I don't think we're trying to pitch around Yoshida. This one's fouled back 3-1. and one. Pitch is low and in, no chance at all. Ball four, excuse me, and uh, Yoshida draws the walk. There are two on now with only one out, and here comes Rafaela, who hit that controversial double off the wall and left back in the uh, second inning. Uh, it was a line drive off the wall. The left fielder never, Nevin had fielded it uh, cleanly and threw a strike to second base. Colton Wong stood there with a ball in his glove down by the bag. 
before Raffaella even went into a slide. He didn't even begin to go into a slide. That's how quickly the ball had gotten there and beat him. And somehow uh, he overslid the bag and still was safe. I don't know what happened. Anyway, here's a swing and a miss. Boy, Raffaella was going for the going for the uh, fences on that swing. He has scored the only run in this game. And now a chance to drive in a run. This ball's low. One ball and one strike. Yo, Fitzy. How's my thumbnail game looking? And hey to the five people out there. Hey, if you don't mind, if you're watching, go ahead and hit that like button. As you can tell, I'm a small channel. Very, very, very small. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm doing my best. Well, wow. this is a lot different than my other channel. Look at that average view dur duration. I'm used to half an hour. There's a lot of people that are just coming in here going, who the hell is this guy and getting the hell out? Uh, how do I make people stay? Is it the cur my curtain behind me that goes to my uh, balcony? Is awful looking. It's dreadful. I never, I never intended my curtain to be on camera. It looks like a shower curtain. It's awful. Uh, you know, but it's a cheap apartment. So what do you want me to do? Here's Willie or Bray, who's up there with two on, two out, and a one zero count now. Next pitch is swung on. That ball's belted deep to right field and caught right there on the track. Oh, the right fielder was playing deep, and thankfully so. My goodness, that ball was crushed. Bad luck there. Bad, bad luck for Willier Abreu. That ball was hammered out there to right field. The Orioles get out of it. At the end of four, it's still one nothing Boston. Is the pitch count still in, and are the pitches limited to 85? I'm not quite sure what you mean, card. You mean you mean for a particular pitcher? I don't think any... Are you talking about in the regular... I don't know. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Thomas, a little help? Somebody? I apologize if what you're asking me, Card, is, is is being asked in a very, you know, plain and easy to understand way, and I'm just not getting it, but that could be the lack of caffeine. For a particular pitcher, it was tested last season or the season before. Wow, really? You mean to enforce that no pitcher in the game can throw more than 85 pitches? That sounds insane. I mean, I get that uh, pitchers nowadays are being asked more and more to, you know, really stretch their arms because of they're putting so much spin on the ball. They're, they're they're really, you know, putting their arms to the test. But to make a hard, fast rule that nobody can pitch more than 85, I, this is the first I've heard of it. It's definitely not implemented yet. Uh, I can't believe it was even tested. When you say it was tested, in the majors or down in the minors? I, I, This is the first I'm hearing of it. But I'm glad this is the kind of stuff I need to know. Because, uh, again, I was out of the baseball scene there for some time. Okay, uh, so that's going to be the end of the day for uh, Criswell. Kenley Jansen's on the pitch. You, you might have heard of him. Jansen is on with Tyler Nevin at the plate. He'll be followed by Colton Wong and Ryan McKenna. Ugh, not exactly an impressive three batters coming up against Kenley Jansen. The 0-1 pitch is swung on and popped foul behind the plate. It was a trial as a limiter to protect pitchers' arms. It was MLB as I watched a game or two with the Blue Jays using it. I just, 
I mean, I, again, I, in any sport, you know, I, I'd hate to see, you know, things done in a way that makes an athlete more susceptible to injury, you know, because again, you're exploiting a person's health by trying, you know, maximize whatever for the entertainment of the game and all this or that. And yeah, so yeah, I'm again, I, I, I always want to keep an athlete, uh, you know, healthy out there, you know. Jansen's uh, first pitch to Wong is popped foul. And wait, is it going to stay in play? The third baseman has a look near the screen, and I think it bounced off his head. Was that Devers? I think Devers just had a ball bounce off of his head. Hey, Fitzy, you around? You might want to. Keep an eye on your franchise player's uh, condition there after taking one off the dome. Here's the 0-1 to Wong. This one's up and away. One ball, one strike. It was twofold. Protect the pitcher's arms and to speed up the game. How would limiting a pitcher to 85 pitches speed up the game? I mean, if let's say you're pitching a gym. That's the other reason. There's so many reasons why I don't like this. I mean, if you're pitching a gym and uh, you could go the full game, but it takes 100 pitches to do it, I mean, making a pitching change takes time. Like, how is it speeding up the game by letting a starter go the distance without making any pitching changes? Plus, again, like, if you're in a situation where you get to the 85 pitch mark, but you're dealing... Now you got to come out of the game. What if you're What if you're on a no hitter? Are we ever going to have a no hitter again? When's the last time we had a no hitter of eighty five pitches or less? Here's a high fly ball out to center field, and Duran will chase it down to make the catch. Two away here in the top of the fifth. Long retired on a deep fly ball to center. Yeah, that's an, that just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I get it. You want to protect. But I mean, this, that's why it needs to be, I don't know, some, I don't know, another solution. I can't sit here and go like, oh, I've got the perfect solution to fix that. Because I do, again, want to see uh, athletes protected and not sort of just used up and disposed of like Kleenex. But there's got to be something between, I mean, that just sounds like a, I don't want to sit here and really think of a clever way of handling this. That just sounds like the first idea in somebody's mine well what if we just said only 85 pitches and that's it now i think you need to be a little more uh yeah yeah whatever you do it's got to be a little, a little more intricate than just set a pitch limit i don't follow baseball much i just noticed it when i was watching the blue jays game. well i'm glad you brought it up i mean i'm gonna have to look into it more it's certainly i haven't heard anybody any talk of it since i started following the game closely last year. So whatever it was, I get the feeling that it's not going to come into practice anytime soon. Again, I'm just, as soon as you, you, you say that notion, my brain immediately thinks of about 15 different reasons why that wouldn't make any sense. And only one reason why it does make sense. And yeah, that's just, it's just uh, one one is outweighing the other. Hey, there's a shot of Mike Elias out there in the stands. How you doing there, Mikey boy? Keep, keep, keep up the good work. Have you traded Ramon Urias yet? Oh, buddy, old pal. We need to find a trade partner for Ramon Urias. We need the space. And McKenna strikes out to win the inning. So McKenna update, comebacker to the pitcher and a strikeout. So, yeah, McKenna, if you are planning on making one last impression, uh, well, the impression is you're not major league material. That's my impression. All right, well, I'm going to see about some natural light maybe coming through here.
Okay, bottom of the fifth we go. I got my nicotine fix. Kids don't smoke. Here's the pitch. In there for a call strike at the top of the zone to who's up at the plate? Well, guess what? The uh, broadcast has just switched. We are now watching uh, Nesson, New England Sports Network coverage now of the same game. Or at least I'm watching it. Here's a pop foul that Gunnar Henderson is going to chase down right up against the screen to make the catch. Nice play there by Henderson. Running back into foul ground. His back to the plate. And chasing it down right up against the uh, screen there. Now what? Why did it just go to commercial? I have no idea what's happening. What is happening? Uh, they may, uh, maybe they made a pitching change. I don't know. They did. They just. They didn't do that classic show somebody leaving the mound to let you know there's a pitching change shot. They just cut to commercial. Were three outs made that quickly? Was that a full inning? That's impossible. Maybe my stream skipped. Is my stream messing up? I don't mean my my YouTube stream. I mean my baseball broadcast. Yeah, Heasley's on the mound. I can see on the screen here that... Wong popped out and Duran flied out. Endeavors is at the plate. Meanwhile, I'm staring at commercials. So I really don't know. Yeah, just hitting two outs now on the Yahoo page. With Duran flying out. I don't know where we are. Okay, we're back to the broadcast. We're staring at the ALE standings from last season. That's all well and good. Thanks for showing that. Now let me see what is going on in terms of where we are in this game, please. Okay, I see the standings. Thank you. It's a nice nice graphic work. Props uh, to the graphic team. You may now show us something else. We see the standings. Okay. Bottom of the fifth. Oh, so I guess, is my stream just super behind now? First pitch, Heasley, Duran pops it up. The shortstop, Henderson, goes out into shallow left field to make the catch. I guess I'm just way behind, unfortunately. Maybe if I uh, refresh it, it'll get back to where it needs to be. However, I'm going to wait at least another batter because apparently we're going to get a couple of quick outs here. Or not. Hey, Cam, how you doing? I think it just jumped up because now it's already... Okay, Devers is at the plate. Here's the pitch to him, and it's upstairs. 1-0. Devers is 0-2 for 2 today. And also had a foul ball bounce off of his head. <laughs> That's been his highlight today. 2-0 and the count on him now. And the next pitch is fouled at the plate, and the catcher is, oh, no, that might have been, yikes. That might have hit him in the old, uh, yep, the twig and berries. The old twig and berries got the worst of that one for Perez there behind the plate. Not fun. Two, two and one the count. Two down here in the bottom of the fifth, and the pitch to Devers is fouled away. Yeah, I think what happened was my broadcast like got frozen and then just sort of skipped back to live. So I was I was in the lurch there for a minute, but for now we're good. The 2-2 two -two to Devers. And it just froze again. Are you kidding? Okay, there it goes. 
And here's a line drive base hit in the right field. Devers with a solid single to right. A two out knock and that'll bring up Trevor Story. That was a breaking ball there from Heasley. Devers stayed back on it. A nice level swing. Here's Trevor Story who's one for two. First pitch to him is at the top of the zone for a called strike. The Pirates got one back on the Blue Jays, currently 3-1 to one Toronto over Pittsburgh in the top of the fifth. And the only other spring action going on at the moment. Heasley from the stretch, and the 0-1 is swung on and missed. Easily went with the high fastball, and Story came up empty. And my stomach is starting to growl. What inning are we in? Bottom of the fifth? Oh. Oh, my God. Ah. Now, I've, I had an empty stomach, and then I put some coffee in there, and now it's an empty stomach full of coffee. That's not a good feeling. This pitch is inside. One ball and two strikes. Oh, God. Ugh. I am insane. I, I mean, I'm insane. What am I doing? All right, this one's inside. Two balls, two strikes. To story. Devers at first, two down. One nothing Boston here in the bottom of the fifth. The one run coming in on a Willier Abreu RBI single back in the second. One run, six hits, no errors for Boston. No runs on just two hits, no errors for the Orioles. Here's a swing and a foul ball back and out of play. The count remains two and two on Trevor Story. Oh, Carr, don't feel too bad for Cam. You, you, you don't want to stay in Florida for too long. Things get kind of weird down there. Let's just be happy. He went down there and came back in one piece. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a line drive in the left field, and that's going to get down for a hit. It rolls up against the wall. Devers will make it the third. However, Story will be held to a long single. First and third now with two down for Tristan Cassis. Nice swing there by Story. Uh, opening day for most teams is on the uh, 28th of March. So one week from today, card. One week from today is most people's opening day, most teams. First pitch to Cassis is high for ball one. Cassis is 0 for 2. He grounded out and he had a fly out as well. The 1 0 from Heasley. And that's just off the plate outside. Catcher tried to frame it for him, but he didn't get the call. 2 0 the count. And the next pitch from Heasley is low. And here's a attempted steal, and Story is going to swipe second. Catcher threw down there, but uh, too late and not an accurate throw either way. Stolen base for Story. Runners at second and third now with two away. And behind in the count of Cassis, open base at first. Maybe you think about... Uh, being careful here. It's already 3-0. and A base open. You got Tyler O'Neill, the right-handed hitter on deck. You might want to be careful here with Cassis.
This is one of those situations is and where what what do you do? do? Do you play it like a regular season situation where the, you would probably kind of pitch around Cassis? That pitch is just off the plate. It looked like Heasley tried to get a strike, but it's ball four. But yeah, I mean, in that situation, do you maybe kind of pitch around them like you would in the regular season, or do you say, "Well, I'm here to try to work on my pitches. I want to try to get them out." Either way, he does walk, and now the bases are loaded with two down, and that'll get the uh, pitching coach out here for a conference. Heasley has thrown 16 pitches since coming on here, and he's gotten a couple of outs, but he's also loaded up the bases with a pair of singles and a walk. Tyler O'Neill at the plate. He doubled in his last at bat. Now has a chance to do some real damage with the bases loaded and two down. one nothing Boston here in the bottom of the fifth. The first pitch to O'Neill is swung on a missed. Breaking ball there from Heasley. And O'Neill swung over the top of that one. The 0-1 is swung on and missed, 0-2. So Heasley gets two strikes on O'Neill and potentially one pitch away from getting out of a big jam here. From the stretch, the 0-2 pitch is swung on and hit in the air to left. This should get him out of the inning, and it does. Catch made and left. Inning over. At the end of five, it's still one nothing Boston. The Red Sox have now left seven men on base. So if there's one criticism, it's that the Red Sox, you know, were this a regular season game. You'd like to see him cash in on some of these opportunities. They are cl clinging to a one nothing lead. Let's see how long they can hold it. I'm just glad uh, that that kid is out of the game. And maybe we're done with Kenley, Kenley Jansen as well. It looks like Martin. Is that Chris Martin? Isn't that his first name? Fitzy, if you're still around. Chris Martin, right? Yeah, Chris Martin. Chris Martin with a great, uh, yeah, so they brought out Jensen, Kenley Jensen, and now they're going Martin. This is basically your closer and setup guy, right? Martin with some great stats last season. 4-1 record, 105 ERA, 46 strikeouts in, what, 51 in the third innings? A whip of just a buck oh three. Good stuff. Good reliever stats. Boy, you know it's been a quiet game when Orioles Twitter has not had a single new tweet since they posted the lineup card six hours ago. There is nothing going on in this game for Baltimore. Nothing. But we do have uh, Perez followed by the top of the order coming up. So let's see what we can do here as we get a look at some of the Fan Fest photographs for the Orioles here. Hey, there's Mr. Splash. You know, you got the snorkel. You got the, the inner tubes. It's, it's a great look. Mr. Splash. I might go as Mr. Splash for Halloween this October. It'll be a big hit over here in Thailand. Everybody will know who Mr. Splash is. Actually, it would be a great look for Songkran. If you don't know what Songkran is, that's the Thailand New Year. It's not like a one-night, clock-turns-midnight kind of New Year's celebration that we're used to in the States and other places around the world. Their New Year uh, is like a week-long celebration of water. And water just gets sprayed around wherever you go during Songkran. Everybody is welcome to throw water on each other. No rules. So, you'd be uh, 
you'd be in good shape if you dressed like Mr. Splash if you came out here. Here's a hit to opposite field and over the head of the left fielder. Martin, or I, I keep wanting to say Martin Perez. It's Michael Perez, the catcher, with a double here to lead off the top of the sixth. So there you go. All right. We, we got the starter out of there. We got the closer out of there. And we got a leadoff double. Let's go. Let's build off of this. Gunnar Henderson is due up. Top of the order. Tying run at second with nobody out. I mean, all right, this is what I want to see. I mean, let's, you know, let's play the kind of baseball that's fundamental, which is to say Gunner at minimum needs to get that runner to third base with this at bat. Yes, it would be great to see him go yard or hit one in the gap, but just make sure you get you hit it in such a way to get that runner over. This one's fouled back. One and one the count on Gunner Henderson. Perez with decent speed for a catcher out there at second. Here's the pitch. Foul back again. One in ball and two strikes on Gunner. Do, 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 do. Oh, over 100 people have popped in. Five have been brave enough to hang around. How you doing, five people? Hey, and look at that. There is light behind me. The day has begun. Here's a swing and a pop fly, and it'll go out of play. Thanks for hitting the like button, folks. If you haven't done it already, I'd appreciate it if you did. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. The one-two is in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes to Gunnar Henderson. Nobody down. Tying run at second here in the top of the six. One nothing Boston. Orioles looking to tie it up. Get that first run of the game. They nearly scored in the first inning when Santander hit a ball about a foot away from clearing the left field wall for a home run. Instead, he got a double. And then Gunnar Henderson, uh, excuse me, Ryan Mountcastle, Followed him and hit a ball to deep center, but a really nice catch prevented any scoring from happening. Here's the payoff pitch to Gunner and another foul ball. Long at bat here for Gunner Henderson. I think this is about to be his ninth pitch in the at bat. Eighth or ninth pitch. Let's see. The 3 2 is fouled back again. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Gunner working hard out there. Let's just hope he gets the result we're looking for. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, uh, God. My body. My body can't just sit here in a chair after waking up at four in the morning. I got to move my body around. This ball is hit on the ground on the right side. Hey, that's exactly what you need to do, Gunner. Yes, you made an out. Yes, it was a weak tapper to the right side, but that's exactly what was needed to move the runner to third base. So the tying run now 90 feet away with one down for Anthony Santander. And the Boston catcher, is that Connor Wong going out to talk with Martin on the mound? Probably uh, going over some sign changes maybe with a runner out there at second. As we get a panoramic look of the field here at JetBlue Park. The dimensions do somewhat mimic Fenway with that left field replica monster and then the sort of deep triangle out there just to the right of center. Here's a quick attempt to get the runner going to third, and the ball is thrown away. Perez broke for third base. The catcher popped up, 
and threw the ball past the third baseman down the left field line. Perez gets up and can walk home. The Orioles have tied the game without any sort of use of a bat. A Boston error allows the Orioles to tie this game up. It's a one-to-one. Santander still at the plate with a 1-0 count. Base is empty now. The pitch to him is popped up. Right side. The catcher Wong over to have a look, but it reaches the stands. Well, you'll take it any way you can get it. The Orioles have a run in here. It's a brand new ball game, so to speak. One and two the count on Santander. One out here. One in in the top of the sixth. Ones are wild. Hey there, Seeley. The one two is up and away. Two balls and two strikes to Santander. Seeley, help me, brother. I am struggling. Oh, I need some breakfast. The 2-2 two -two is popped foul behind the plate, and we'll do it again. Boston got their run in the second. RBI single from Willier Abreu. The Orioles have tied it here in the sixth on an error trying to throw out Michael Perez stealing third base. Here's a pitch outside to Santander and the count runs full. Yeah, I yeah, my pff, there's no candle left. It's it's just the wick. There's no more wax in this candle. It's just a limp wick. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to go into detail about things in my other uh, channel starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Be sure to tune in for that. Oh, you know, a lot of me said, oh, Steve, just, oh, don't do this game. Don't wake up again at 4 o'clock in the morning for a spring training game. But I, I said to myself, you got to do it. You got to do it consecutive days. Here's a line drive back up the middle for Santander, a base hit. Santander will reach first with one away. As the Orioles try to rally here after tying the ball game to perhaps try and take the lead. Yeah, the sun is just starting to creep up. Maybe I can go ahead and cut off my awful indoor lighting here. Let me take a look here. Yeah, I should be able to turn these off now. Hold on a sec. I don't know. Is that too dark? Maybe that's too dark. And I'm, I'm, I'm so terribly backlit because of the way I have to position my laptop. It has, to, it has to face where my light source normally comes from. I use that natural light for my other stream. But my camera isn't facing this corner of the room. But I have to in order to be able to look at the monitor. Otherwise, I'd have to reverse everything. And, yeah, that ain't happening. That is not going to happen. See, I'm kind of stuck with this uh, setup here until I get that ring light and start streaming like a real YouTuber. The lighting was okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy to turn off those awful artificial lights. I need to go out there and get one of those... Nicer bulbs. What, what do you call those? Those. What are those more modern version of light bulbs that aren't so harsh on the eyes? Yeah, I'm not too worried. 
I mean, are we, the only thing is, who wants to see a big white blur in the corner of their screen? I, I personally don't like to see that. But what else can I do here? I'd either, I'd either have to close the curtain and rely on the artificial light, which I don't prefer. But maybe for people watching, it would be better. Either way, it's my voice that matters, right? I'm just here to let you know I'm alive. Hello, it's a real person. I'm not a. I'm not AI. I'm not Chat GPT calling a ball game. I promise. Okay, back to the action we go. We've had a pitching change. There's one out in the top of the sixth. Santander's at first base. And Ryan Mountcastle at the plate. First pitch, he fouls it off to the left. Uh, Lucas Lutke is on to pitch. He pitched for the Braves last season, made 12 starts, had an ERA over seven. Whew. How the heck did you get seven? Or how did you get 12 starts on the Braves with an ERA like that? How did the Braves win 103 games or whatever it was if this dude was on the team? He must have lost like 25% of their games. 0-2 uh, the count on Mountcastle. All right, Seeley. And this one's in the dirt and gets away from the catcher. They're going to try to get the second base. And safe is the call. Close play. The ball got away from the catcher. Heston Kerstad, by the way, came on to pinch run for uh, Anthony Santander. That update has not... Oh, now they've just thrown it up there on the screen there for you. Yeah, Kerstad came in to run, and he gets to second base. So the go-ahead run is now in scoring position with one down and a 1-2 count on Mount Castle. The pitch is swung on and drilled, but it's going to go foul. Mount Castle out in front of a breaking ball. My goodness, if you waited a little bit on that one, that ball would probably still be in the air right now. Mountcastle loves to mash left-handed pitching, and he's got one out there right now. The next pitch is swung on and drilled foul off to the opposite field. Corner into the stands. I need breakfast. <laughs> I can't do this. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I can't wait. I mean, either I'm going to get used to this or something. Here's a swing and a miss. Mountcastle chases one low and away, so he strikes out. That's a big strike out there for Lucas Lutke. Two down. Cursed at its second, and Westberg is at the plate. He takes a first pitch strike. Westberg today 0 for 2, a strikeout and a foul out. Brandon Hyde has hit Westberg everywhere in the lineup in the spring. This is the first time I've seen him hitting cleanup. Here's a swing and a foul back, 0 and 2. I mean, he's not a cleanup hitter by any means. I don't I really don't understand what the what the point of it is. The O2 is low and away, check swing, they appeal and no swing says the first base umpire, one ball, two strikes to Jordan Westberg. We've got a 1-1 ball game here in the top of the 6th. The pitch is swung on a miss. Another breaking ball low and away. And Lutka is able to get another batter to chase. He strikes out. The inning is over. The Orioles, though, tied up the ball game courtesy of a error by the Red Sox catcher. And at the end of five and a half innings, it's the Orioles won, the Red Sox won. Whew. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, the only real reaction to today's uh, lineup card on Twitter is what's with the bottom of that order? That's. I think we're looking at... <sighs> I think the fact that we're seeing guys like Nevin and Wong and McKenna and Perez in this lineup today, I, I got a feeling some, if not all four of these players, are going to be uh, reassigned or cut or something probably by tomorrow night's game. I think this is probably their last uh, last hurrah, as they say. That, that would be my guess. I mean, the cuts have to start coming. Uh, you want to kind of get it down to a point where you're kind of playing a simulated game here in the next or the last couple of... Uh, boy, did they have to do my boy Mullins like that with that photo? I know he's got a bit of that uh, skin condition, uh, kind of kind of a bumpy face, but boy, that that photo really doesn't... Help him out. Wandison Charles is on to pitch for the Orioles. Charles played in double and triple A last year. He's a big guy. I know this. In the show, which I've successfully downloaded as of yesterday and have been able to play a grand total of one game. Hey, I beat the Angels, by the way, four to three in extra innings. I was so angry. I played my first game, my first franchise game on the show with the Orioles, playing the Angels, Corbin Burns versus uh, Sandoval. I took a four nothing lead into like the sixth inning, and then I wound up Craig Kimbrell. I brought out for the ninth with a one run lead, and he gave up a home run in the ninth inning to blow the save. And then uh, I wound up winning it in the eleventh inning. I couldn't score my ghost runner in the tenth. But uh, I did pitch the 10th and 11th innings without giving up a ghost runner. So the rest of the pitching staff did their job. But, yeah, I brought in Kimbrell in the 9th. And it wasn't even the heart of the uh, Angels' order. I had Cano in, in for the 8th facing uh, the likes of Rendon and Trout. And then I bring Kimbrell in in the 9th, and he gave up a game-tying home run to, like, Tyler Ward. Ridiculous. I hope that's not a sign of things to come. Anyway, I'm sitting here talking about a video game while a actual game is being played. Good work, Steve. Uh, Raphael is at the plate with a 1-0 count. The Red Sox have a runner at second. Nobody out after a double by Yoshida that I guess I just completely failed to call. I believe I completely failed to call that double by Yoshida. My apologies. I'll attempt to keep my anecdotes about a video game to a minimum going forward. Wandison Charles takes a look at the runner. And the 1-1 pitch to Raffaella is swung on and grounded a short. Here's a throw, and it's accurate in time. But Holiday, by the way, is in at short making that play. And I suppose we're going to be in line for several other changes let me take a look at, the, look at this lineup card. Yes, indeed. Holiday's at short. Kerstad stays in the game, moves to left field. Kobe Mayo is now at first base. Kyle Stowers is in center. And that appears to be all the changes for the Orioles so far, while the Red Sox appear to have all their starters still out there. Here comes William Abreu. One for two with an RBI single, the only run of the game for Boston at the moment. But here he is. Up now with the runner 90 feet away and only one out. A chance to drive in the go-ahead run. He's got a 1-0 count. And the pitch is swung on and fouled away. One ball, one strike. The 1-1. One, one. Is swung on and missed. Some good heat there from Charles. One and two the count. All right, Wandison. And William Bray calls for time. 
as we get a look at Holiday out there at short. Wearing number 87. I wonder what his uh, big league number is going to eventually be. What was Matt Holiday's number? You think he wears his dad's number? Would that make sense? Here's a check swing and the appeal, no swing. That's a ball. Two balls, two strikes to Willier Abreu. Wanda and Charles trying to get him out with that runner at third base. The 2-2 is foul. Oh, no, it's off the end of the bat. And right to the third baseman who's standing next to the runner, able to check him back to the bag, throw to first, and Abreu is retired. So a nice piece of work there. Call it luck. Call it what you will. But the Orioles managed to keep the runner grounded at third, and now there's two down. And up steps Connor Wong, 0 for 2, and also responsible for the Orioles run in this game with the error he made in the top half of the inning. And this ball is way upstairs, ball one. Two down, runner at third, one to one ball game between the Orioles and Red Sox in the bottom of the sixth here at JetBlue Park in Fort Myers, Florida home of the Red Sox Spring Training Complex. And the 1-0 to Wong is foul back, one ball, one strike. I need breakfast, please. I need breakfast. Oh, oh God. Oh. Oh. The 1-1 one one is low and away. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm going to have to do yoga between innings if I'm going to be doing this. I mean, I can't wake up and then s immediately sit in a chair for three hours. It's, no, I, I, I get up and I take my morning walk. And I move around. I get the blood pumping. Oh, this is. That means I'm going to have to wake up even earlier. I'm going to have to wake up earlier. I'm going to have to allow for an extra like 20 minutes to just do some walking. It's the only way this is going to work. Okay, the 3-1 to Wong. Up and in for ball four. Wong will take first base. Runners at the corners now with two down. And that will flip the lineup back over for Duran, who is 0 for 3. And here's a pinch runner coming on for Wong. Number 12. So I'm going to assume it's somebody of note. That's a low number. Uh, Cam, I gotta, I gotta appease uh, my loyal uh, following there on my other channel. I'm not giving up on my other channel, and I don't want them to have the impression that I'm going to prioritize this channel over that channel. I'm trying to give both channels equal treatment. Here's the first pitch to Duran, and it's in there for a called strike. Two down, runners at first and third, and a tie ball game in the bottom of the sixth. Charles's next pitch is, oof, where'd that miss? Outside corner, the catcher froze the, froze the glove there for a sec, but uh, they don't get the call, one ball, one strike. Cam, once I get through tonight's uh, stream on my other channel, then I, I, I don't have any streams until like Sunday night. So I'll have a couple of days of recovery. I say that though, I, I basically have to maintain the sleep schedule. I can't just constantly flip back and forth between my normal routine and waking up at four in the morning to, to do a game. I'm going to just have to start like going to bed at 8 o'clock at night and waking up at like 3, 4 in the morning every day. I don't know. 2 and 2 the count on Duran. Thankfully, I'm very stubborn. The only reason this is going to work, if it does work, is that I'm very stubborn. <laughs> 
And here's a swing and a miss, a strikeout for Charles, and the inning is over. The Red Sox threaten, but they strand another runner. That's nine men left on base for Boston through six. We head to the seventh, tied at one. Hey there, Spaceman. How are you? Thanks for uh, leaving a comment there at the very beginning before I went live. Well, what did it say? This is how little activity there is on my tiny little channel. Let's go O's, it says. Indeed, let's go O's, Space. Unfortunately, only one run on the board, and it wasn't because of an Orioles bat. It was a Red Sox error that allowed for the Orioles to tie this game in the top of the sixth. One won the game now, and we're beginning to get into those changes all around. Do up for the Orioles. Well, here's something to get excited about, Spaceman. He got here just in time. Jackson Holiday is set to lead off the top of the seventh, followed by Tyler Nevin and then Colton Wong. So as soon as Holiday's at bat is over, feel free to go uh, grab a snack, uh, you know, check the laundry. <laughs> I don't think you're going to have much of a care for the Colton Wong at bat. But the Jackson Holiday at bat might be worth listening. Decided not to watch hockey today. You mean stream? Is uh, Fitzy doing a stream tonight? I think Fitzy's doing the Bruins, right? There he is. This is so unprofessional of me, but whatever. Hey, Fitz. How you doing? I know your volume's down. What's the deal? Pure? Charles, I know you. Come over here and say hello. Cam. Cam, are you around? Tell, tell your boys to give me a raid, a one-time raid. They can go right back to watching the game, at least during intermission or something. Yeah, they're in intermission right now. Yo. Yo. You in intermission? Help a brother out. <laughs> I can't even type. Uh, Lutka is out there for a second inning of work and one and one the count on Jackson Holiday. Let me. <laughs> I don't even know what he's saying because I got the volume down. The one one the Holiday is low and away. It gets all the way to the backstop. Yeah, help a brother out. Come on, Fitz. What the hell? Come on, Fitz. You got uh, Cam over there. You got Seeley. They came over. You got Rishi Rich. Rishi can come by and give me a like and a hello. Come on, Charles. Charles, I know you're in the Bahamas. Come on, buddy. What the hell? All right, here's a ground ball from Holiday, and it's going to go foul along that first base line. He ran hard all the way just in case. And, boy, I got to tell you, these new pants, I, yeah, I just saw more of Jackson Holiday than I really wanted to. Hey, there you go. There you go. Hey, Fitzy. Hey, hey, all right. Hey, all right, huh? Yay, yay, yay. Peace and all that stuff. All right, great, fantastic. Hey, 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 hey. I, you know, hang with Fitz, but say hi to me for intermission. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Fitz. All right. Sorry for uh, basically blowing off my own stream just to mess around with Fitz for a minute, but uh, yeah, holiday. What happened there? He flied out. I apologize. I was all about hyping up the Jackson Holiday at bat, and I spent it messing around with Fitz's stream. I get what I deserve. Here's the 2-2 pitch. 
Oh, I see. It's behind. That's the fly ball to left field for Holiday. Okay, so Holiday's retired. One away here in the top of the seventh. And, uh, yeah, my my game day uh, interface here, stat tracker, or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's uh, a little bit ahead of me. I got to be honest. Just waiting for that giant raid to happen. Here's Tyler Nevin. And the first pitch to him is outside for ball one. Maybe with a little bit of help, I can even get to double-digit likes. The next pitch is hitting the air to right center field. It's falling fast and will drop in there for a one-out single for Tyler Nevin. Hey, card, I got gotcha. you. Please don't talk about food, though. I'm starving. Can you tell me it's a lousy dinner that you don't even want to eat? It's like a... It's like some frozen pizza bagels with freezer burn on it or something. I don't know. Make it sound unappetizing. I'm starving over here. Want to know the count here on Colton Wong? With Nevin at first and one away. This one's in the dirt, 2-0. and 1-1 oh. ball game here in the top of the seventh between the Orioles and Red Sox at the JetBlue Stadium, home of Boston's spring training complex in Fort Myers, Florida. The 2-0 from Lutka is in there, a strike. One of these... Soft tossing lefties with a lot of breaking but breaking stuff. Two and one. The pitch is swung on and hit on the ground to the right side. Second baseman will turn and get the force at second. Nice bit of athleticism there from Raffaella. To get the force on the lead runner. So two down. And that'll bring up perhaps, well, he is DHing today. Maybe they'll, again, the fact that he's DHing, that means they're going to give him, you know, more. Yeah, this is Ryan Mc, I'm calling it right now. This is Ryan McKenna's final game as a Baltimore Oriole. They're going to, they're going to do what, do what they will with him after this game. I'm calling it. Want to know the count on him. Now, if he hits a home run here, still doesn't change anything. So far today, he's hit a comebacker to the pitcher and struck out. So not, not too much to be excited about. Uh-oh, I just saw something out of the corner of my eye, though. You see, that's how the reverse jinx works. You reverse jinx. You, you, you say somebody on your team's not going to do something, and then they will. Don't sit there and go, come on, Gunner. You're going to hit a home run. And then he straight, no, do the opposite. So we're about to see Ryan McKenna do something on a one-two pitch, I believe. And yes, it's a hanging breaking ball hit high and deep to left center field. It's going to bounce off the 379-foot sign. And coming around to score on that play, I guess a pinch runner had come in. That's Robinson. I'm like, who is that guy running like Willie Mays Hayes out there? Robinson on the pinch run, comes around to score, and just as I'm telling you, Ryan McKenna is finished. There's an RBI double. There you go. That's why we put you in the lineup, okay? Put that on your Instagram and shop it to the 29 other teams in hopes to find a job somewhere else, okay? I'm happy for you. Thank you for giving us the lead. And that's it for uh, McKenna as well. Connor Norby is now on the pinch run for him. So Robinson came on to pinch run. For Tyler Nevin, or excuse me, for Colton Wong. Wong reached base on the fielder's choice. That got Nevin out of the way. 
Oh, it's so difficult with these spring games late. Whew. Either way, 2-0 the count now on the current batter, Michael Perez, who's still out there doing the catching. He had a double in his last at-bat, and he came in to score that first Oriole run on the error by Connor Wong. Swing and a miss. 2-1 and one the count on Perez. Runner at second, two down, and a run in here in the top of the seventh. The Orioles looking for their 21st win, win of the spring. This one's way upstairs, 3-1 and one the count. As Lutka is now over 30 pitches. As far as I know, he's sort of a, you know, a middle relief lefty that you bring on to get a few outs. This seems to be getting a, to a high pitch count here for him. And this one's off the plate for ball four. So Lutka, I would assume that's going to be it for him. I, I, I don't understand why he was out there for that batter. And here comes everybody. The infield's coming in. Here comes somebody to make a change. And that will indeed spell the end of the day for Lutka. Why did he pitch that last batter? He was already at 30 pitches, and he had just gotten – a ball crushed off of him. And again, this guy should be like a 20 to 25 pitch guy, I would assume, as a, as a middle reliever. Who scored for the Orioles? Uh, McKenna hit a double and Robinson, who pinch ran for Connor Wong. Robinson, who's been playing shortstop uh, in the spring, uh, has definitely got some legs. He came around from first all the way to home. Good speed there. All right, about the dinner. Or is that already there? <laughs> Am I reading comments that were already there? Oh, God. All right. I'm going to go back and bug Fitz. I'm, I'm serious, Fitz. Serious, man. During intermission... We got Pierre over here, too. We got Ryan Ripken. Oh, I can go say hi to Ryan and the gang. Hey, gents. I'm currently calling the game. Keep up the good work. Looks like they got somebody on as a guest. Actually, I don't see Ryan anywhere. What's going on? With, okay, so they're talking about the Otani situation. Anyway, they're on too. Maybe, uh, yeah. All right. Back to the ball game. New pitcher on, number 88 for the Red Sox. This is Wyatt Olds. Wyatt Olds. Pitched in uh, the rookie league in Double A last season with a record of one and nine and an ERA of over seven and a half. Oof! And this ball gets away. A wild pitch. Both runners will advance. Runners at second and third now with two away. As the Red Sox might have themselves a bit of a wild arm here. On the mound. Look out. Kyle Stowers is up for his first plate appearance in this one. Swing and a miss. Seven home runs this spring for Stowers as he asks for time. Number eight right here would be nice. Two down, runners at second and third. 2-1 Orioles here in the top of the seventh. The 1-2 pitch is outside. Two balls and two strikes. 
Here's a look at some of the stats on the screen. Stowers in 18 games this spring, seven home runs, 14 RBI. Kowser hit, hitting 342 in 15 games with five homers, 11 RBI. Mayo, 21 games, 333 average, eight extra base hits. Swing and a miss by Stowers, and he strikes out. Seventh inning stretch time here in Fort Myers. The Orioles get a run and take the lead thanks to a double by Ryan McKenna. And we'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Orioles two, Red Sox one. I know YouTube etiquette is you can't ask for a raid. That's petty, right? You just have to be happy to get a raid when you get one. But for, for crying out loud, during intermission, I got some people over there that know me. Come on over here. Get over here. <laughs> oh, oh, did I lose it? Uh-oh. What happened to the stream this time? Well, let's see if uh, I'm going to be able to watch the remainder of this ball game. My feed has gone down. Stand by, please. Hopefully, we'll be back up and running here in a second. Well, I'm just going to have to let you guys know that uh, Raphael Devers, leading off the bottom of the seventh, was able to draw a walk, and Reyes is on to pinch run for him. So lead off walk. Boston have the tying run at first with nobody out. Trevor Story is due up to hit. And unfortunately for now, I cannot tell you precisely what is going on. Uh, that's a little bit annoying. That's a little, little bit annoying. Pretty, pretty annoying. Okay, it looks like it's about to come back up now. For the... Two people watching. Thank you for your patience. Okay. We are back up and running. Uh, McGow is on the mound now for the Orioles. Left-handed pitcher. And he's got a 1-2 count here on Story. Again, Devers led off with a walk. He's at first, well, pinch runner now for him at first base. To lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh. And a 1-2 count on Trevor Story. We are back up to speed. McGow from the stretch. And the pitch is in the dirt and gets away from the catcher. That's going to allow the runner move to scoring position here with nobody out. A wild pitch from McGow. Not what you wanted to see in a one-run ball game. And why are you not letting me go full screen now? What's the deal with that? You know, this is why we can have nice things. 
The 2-2 pitch is outside, and the count has now run full on Trevor Story. Tying run at second, nobody down here in the bottom of the seventh. On deck is Tristan Cassis. Orioles clinging to a 2-1 lead. The pitch is a big breaking ball that stays outside for ball four. So it's a walk, two on and nobody out. And the Orioles are in some trouble here. Cassis is coming up. Uh, by Pacific, do you mean I'm on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, Spaceman? Yes, indeed. I'm in Thailand. It is currently 7.13 a.m. And is the light coming in way too harsh right now? Am I being back, backlit to death? Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I need to keep an eye on that. Here's a ground ball through the hole on the left side for a base hit. The tying run is going to come in and score. Here comes, oh, did what happened there? Yes, it is the tying run in on an RBI single by Tristan Cassis. It's a 2-2 ball game. And yes, I am coming to you live from uh, the pearly gates, apparently, here. Let me, uh, let me see what I can do about this. Normally, my laptop is facing the opposite corner of the room in this natural light. Yeah, no, look at that. Look if I do that. That is really bad. Wow. Wow. My light's playing tricks on me. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. And this one's in there called strike to who is this? Who's up? Oh, that looks like Tyler O'Neill getting another at bat. He's one for three with a double. Tie ball game now. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh, and the pitch is in the dirt, one and one. All right, let me let me address this lighting situation. Thanks, Spaceman, for bringing that up. Indeed, Space. That is where I am. Hold on a sec. Two and one the count now on Tyler O'Neill. Two and one the count. Where am I at now? I'm hitting the wrong thing. There it is. Okay, that's... That's much better. It's still not ideal, but I'm I gotta have to I have to buy a ring light. Here's a high fly ball to right field and falling down while making the catch. My goodness. Both runners are gonna advance on a fly ball to right field. Even the runner at first is able to get to second base on the out because the right fielder is at Stowers. Uh, fell down while making the catch out there near the track. About five feet in front of the track, a big divot of grass came up off the cleats. Yeah, he just slipped. But somehow still made the catch. Wow. Who is that out there in right field? Oh, Trimble. Trimble out there making that catch. So both runners advance, and now there's one away. So the go-ahead run is 90 feet away with one out, and here's Yoshida. So all these Red Sox hitters in the starting lineup, and they're going through it a fourth time while the Orioles are have pretty much gone to their backup players. Here's a ground ball, and this should get the – well, it's – let's see. Nope. Okay. Terrible call by me. The infield was in. It was a ground ball to the second baseman, Holiday. Uh, you would think the ball's hit to him. You're going to go home, but he, he deked as if he'd go home and instead changed his mind and took the out at first. So the Red Sox have taken the lead on an RBI ground out. Yoshida comes in to get some high fives. And with two down, they're going to make a pitching change. Oh, boy. St. Stephen, the first martyr 
Maybe I'll be the last one. All right, now let me go in here and bother Fitzmore. We have a commercial break as there's a pitching change underway. See, look at that. PAS gave you a raid. <laughs> Return the favor, Fitz. Return the favor. Oh, there's space. Come on, space. It would be great to get this light count up over 10 with just a simple, hey, come on over for a minute. Just come over for a minute and run on back. That's fine. I know, you can't force people. I'll make you love me, Lorraine. One day, Lorraine. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, I hear some uh, screaming. That would be probably people who have gotten uh, in inebriated since last night. 7 a.m. in Thailand is like... 3.30 a.m. on a weekend night back in the States. There's still people running around drunk off of 10 hours of singing karaoke. Okay. We've got another pitcher in here. It's another Suarez. The second Suarez of the day on the mound for the Orioles. It's the lefty. Is it Andrew? It's not Albert. That's right, Andrew Suarez. There you see his numbers. Not pretty. He's in there with a runner at third and two down. Two and one the count. You can't get in the stream? You mean to say you can't you can't uh you can't, you can't type in chat? Right? Well, that's, that's sort of the incentive for those that are interested in this content to sub and those who are just, you know, coming by maybe just to, to troll or whatever to, to not. It's a one-minute wait. And if you feel like, uns I mean, that's what I do. There's, there's people out there. Yeah, to type. Yeah, if you want to sit here and watch, if you and if you want to interact and chat, yeah, it's a one minute wait after you sub. I mean, that's all you gotta do. <laughs> I mean, if, if I do it on other, this is what. Look, I'll be completely honest. There's been uh, streams or channels where I just sub so that I have the ability to chat, and then if I don't feel like hanging around the channel, then I unsub. You, you're more than welcome to do that. You know, here's a swing and a miss, and and that's a one minute wait. You can you can have settings for like ten minutes, half an hour, something crazy like that. This ball's popped up on the infield, and that'll get the Orioles out of the inning. But the Red Sox take the lead with a pair of runs here in the bottom of the seventh. We'll go to the eighth. It's three to two, Boston now. Do up for the Orioles, Kerstad, Mayo, and Maton. Yeah, yeah, Seely. Um, even though, like, in the network of sports streamers that you and I hang out with, like Rhino and Fitzy and PAS, they don't have any. Uh, timer on their ability to chat thing or whatever and you know that's fine if that's you know that's how they'd like to do it yeah there's a reason why people yeah there's a reason for it <laughs> again it, as a viewer if you if you don't have the patience for a one minute commitment then whatever it is you want to say in chat probably isn't that important you know what i mean whereas if you're just around a troll or 
spam something, well, you're going to have to wait a minute before you spam. You know what I mean? And you're going to have to sub. Looks like there's a home run in that uh, Blue Jays Pirates game. It's three to two now in the bottom of the ninth. The Pirates get one back. Triolo with a 421 foot homer to deep right. I'm getting more information in terms of stat cast info just in this little box over here from a different game than I am on the uh, TV broadcast that I'm watching of the Orioles Red Sox game. We're not getting any velocity numbers on pitches. We're not getting any distance numbers on a home run or exit velos, nothing. We got to we got to parse what we're looking at here the old-fashioned way. The naked eye. And now we're in full uh, interview mode on the uh, Nesson broadcast here, so we're not even they're not even showing us the game. We're just watching an interview take place in the dugout. Okay, here we go. Top of the eighth. Kerstad's out there. And the first pitch to him from Olds. Is that Olds still out on the mound? I'm sorry. It's Bernardino. Lefty. Left-handed pitcher. They have not updated it on the Yahoo page yet. Left-hander, number 83, Bernardino is on the mound, and this one's outside to Kerstad. One ball, one strike. And this one is outside, two and one on Kerstad, leading off the top of the eighth. The Orioles down a run after giving up two in the bottom of the seventh. This one is in there, inside part of the plate for a called strike, two and two. Going back to last night, if you only get a chance to stream 162, there's a problem because that will mean you didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, I, whenever I mention what I'm trying to do, I usually say all regular season games and hopefully more in October. Here's a ground ball to short. Uh, well played there. And Kerstad is thrown out at first, one down here in the top of the eighth. Yeah, hopefully it'll be something closer to, let's see, 6, 12, I don't know, 177 games, something like that. That would be nice. I think if I called 177 games, that means we're doing something good this year. Here, ooh, Mayo with a first pitch line drive just over the head of uh, the shorts. Uh, wow, wow, how did the second baseman get to that ball? That ball was scorched over the head of the pitcher who hit the deck, and but not hard enough to get past the infield. Kobe Mayo, wow, wow, what a diving stop by that second. What a play, my goodness. Who's at second for the Red Sox right now? Alvarez. With an absolute web gym, fully laid out, the second baseman with the range all the way to the shortstop side of the bag on a scorcher that had to be 100 miles or more off the bat. Wow, that was, put a gold star next to that play. Holy cow, that deserves some coverage on Twitter. Maybe I'll go to Red Sox Twitter because they, they, they ought to post that play. Good Lord. So there's two down now, base is empty, and 2-0 and the count now on Nick Maton getting his first plate appearance of the game. And the next one is in there for a call. It's strike two and one. Forgive me while I... Where's just the Red Sox Twitter? Three and one the count. And the pitch is swung on and missed. Three and two. 
Uh, here's that. Pi okay. Now this is the. Okay. This is. Is this where he was thrown out? But wasn't. All right. Look at this play. Look at this. I, I can't. I still can't get over this play. I'm so happy now that we've got footage of it. This one is off the plate, and it's going to be a walk. For Maton. Maton reaches first. All right. Holiday's about to come up. So, but yeah. If anyone's watching this, look. Look at that. Look. Look at this. Look. Look right here. Look, he's caught the ball. The throw came in. He's holding the ball right there. And somehow this dude is going to be safe. Does anyone go, have any care to figure out how that happens? Here's a swing and a miss by Holiday. He goes chasing outside. Ooh. Martinez is going to the Mets for $12 million for one year. That makes sense. That sounds about right. Hey, Cam, thanks for the update. Cam, how's Fitz's stream going? Maybe Fitz uh, might want to think about doing a raid over here when he's on intermissions. So I can maybe get this like count up to double digits before I get out of here. That would be nice. One viewer right now? There's one person? <laughs> There's one person here? Holy shit. Okay, I've just doubled my audience. I've just doubled my audience to two. Okay, now three. Okay, I'm, I'm cooking with gas. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how accurate some of this stuff is. Anyway, look at it, folks. There's two down here in the top of the eighth. The Orioles are down a run. They have a runner at first base. One and two, the count here on Jackson Holiday. And the pitch is in there called strike three. Jackson was frozen. And the inning is over. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. The Red Sox lead this one three to two. And I am running out of gas. Holy Toledo. Holy Toledo, man. <sighs> Boy. Regrets. I've had a few. Yeah, that's why I said intermission, Cam. Like, you know, when there's a 15-minute break between periods in hockey and there's no activity going on, that might be a good time for to say, hey, go over and say hi to this stream for a minute and come on back before the start of the second period or start of the third period. You get what I'm saying? Hockey has that built-in downtime, you know? All right, so here's the end of that plate. Like, how does he get in there? How does he do it? How does he How does he not tag him? How is he safe? How? I still can't figure it out. Look at this. The he's got the ball already. He's got the ball. There's what? How is he not out right there? Right there. How are you not out? I, 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 I forget it. And then he slides over the bag. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You, uh, whatever. I, whatever. Fake news. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. All right. Okay, we are set to go to the bottom of the eighth in a one-run ball game, and the first pitch to Willier Abreu, is he out there once more? Andrew Suarez is out there for another inning for the Orioles. Owen won the count, and the next pitch is outside, one and one. I hope Cam, I hope you're not running over to Fitz going. So, Cam, Steve says, why aren't you sending people over for a raid during the intermission? <laughs> like, Cam, don't start a don't start a war between us. I'm just thinking as as a general practice. Like you got Yankees Underground on as well. I keep up with all these streams. Like here's a stream right here that 
I was watching and like, uh, if I want to talk, I got a sub. So I'm subscribed, as you can see, to a Yankees uh, stream or a Yankees channel. I'm subbed up. You think I'm subbed up because I'm a Yankees fan? No, I'm, a, I'm subbed up so I can interact with people. Okay, full count here on Abreu, unless there's a pinch hitter. I'm sorry, it's Koss. Abreu had already struck out, and Koss now does the same. No, that is Abreu. I'm sorry. Abreu strikes out. Koss is coming up now. All right. Called strike three on Abreu. One out here in the bottom of the eighth. This pitch is upstairs for ball one. The only game that actually mattered today, the Padres beat the Dodgers 15 to 11. And why not at this point take a quick look at that box score? Mookie Betts going off four for five. Will Smith going off four for six for the Dodgers. Campusano. Three hit game. Cronenworth going four for four. Bogarts and Tatis with a pair of hits each. I think Machado had a three run homer. If memory serves. And Yamamoto. My goodness. Welcome to the majors, my friend. Enjoy your 45 ERA until your next start, what, 12 days from now or something? Whew. Four hits and a walk in one inning. Struck out two. You would think with 26 runs between these two teams, there'd be a lot of homers, but only one per team. Machado had one for the Padres, while Mookie hit one out. Six RBI for Mookie. Four for five with a homer and six RBIs and a walk. And he said, yeah, I'll play shortstop. Why not? I mean, give that guy the MVP. I mean, you got Betts and Otani. God, it's so unfair. These are the two best players in baseball, probably, at this point, right? All right. Here's a pitch swung on and missed. Two down here in the bottom of the eighth. Let me get us back to uh, where we are. So, Koss, the pinch hitter, is retired. Here's Alvarez, who made that outstanding defensive play. Boy, I really wish or hope that somebody's going to upload a replay of that fantastic defensive play he made. Hey, Seeley, if you're here, uh, do you mind if I do a lag check? Because I got a feeling... Uh, there's a huge lag between when I speak or when you hear my voice and when uh, you re reply. Hey, Pool. Pool's down with the lag check, I'm sure. Hey, Pool, quick lag check. Type in the number three as soon as you can. Do you mind? Do you mind, Pool? I'd appreciate it. Three is the number. The, the, number, the number is three. Here's a tapper foul off to the right. 0-2 oh on Alvarez. Yeah, we're, see, it's already like 10 seconds. Getting up to 15 now. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's bad. That's like 20 second lag. That's, that stinks. How do I fix that? I'm going to have to do some research. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. Because if I can fix the lag, then... Uh, the stat tracker I'm following as well would probably be more, you know, synced up. Two and two the count. With two down here in the bottom of the eighth. Base is empty. Babe Ruth, yes. Babe Ruth played baseball. Here is <laughs> a high fly ball to right field. The right fielder coming in, calling off the second baseman to make the catch, and the inning is over. We're going to the ninth and final inning, I think. The Orioles are down a run 
Uh, if you're hoping for a bunch of sluggers due up in the bottom of the ninth, I'm sorry to inform you that is not the case. It'll be Handley, Robinson, and then Connor Norby. And if anyone gets on, Reed Trimble. No, the lag will be fine, Paul, once we uh, once I do my other stream on my other channel. Uh, you know, like it, it's a little bit worse than it used to be. But yeah, now that I'm doing this two channel thing, I think it's starting to affect the lag. I don't know what else to do. I, I don't have, I don't have it in me to figure it out. I mean, I swear, I'd rather put Ikea furniture together than, uh, you know, figure out more things about how to stream optimally. <laughs> yeah, but I need to run some kind of uh, animated presentation pool. There's just, what, what, what am I going to let people stare at while I call the game? I mean, my calling the game is the number one thing. This, this is a secondary thing, but it's also a necessary thing. Oh, I don't mind losing this ball game. I mind losing uh, sleep. I mind losing my chance to eat breakfast. I mind... Hey, Fitzy! Fitzy, what you doing, man? You mean to tell me when you're streaming and you got an intermission going on, you can't throw me a bone, uh, send some peeps over here for a minute, help get this weak like count up a little bit? I know you're not obligated. Do what you want, Fitz, but come on, buddy. I'm struggling over here. 184 people popped in. And uh, not too many wanted to stick around. I stink. Okay, bottom of the ninth we go. Here we go. Matt Hanley at the plate. And on the mound for the Red Sox, another fantastic baseball name. It's Cam Boozer. Boozer with his 1-0 pitch. And it looks like a slider from the lefty low and in on the right-handed batter. 2-0 the count. Boozer at the plate. God, what a great name. Cam Boozer. The 2-0 is popped up. Oh, no, that's that's a swing and a miss. Nobody would go over. <laughs> God, even the people that know me over there? I saw some names in the chat, like uh, Rishi Rich, who, by the way, is subbed to my other channel. And comes in and says hi there. Here's a ground ball to short. A spinning throw. And that will retire Hanley. Nice play there by the shortstop Reyes. A little pirouette there. One out in the ninth. I don't know. Has the sub count gotten to 60 yet? Let's see. Hey, 61. There you go. Boom. Couple of subs. Hey, if they don't want to sub, they don't want to sub. See, Lee, you don't have to retract the statement. You know, you're, you're right. Maybe they don't. That's fine. <laughs> Look, if, if anyone has an issue with a subscriber-only mode for chat where it takes one minute to be able to chat, then that's fine. I'm fine with that. Again, I'm not I'm not doing anything that's like out of the ordinary, to be honest. I, I see every uh I see the point in doing it. Sixty one. Sixty one. Gosh, I wish I knew what that referenced because of the awful lag situation I have here. Um right. Two down for Connor Norby as uh, Robinson flies out. So we're down to our final batter, perhaps, of the ball game. First pitch to Norby is in there for a called strike. Norby had a two-run homer in the ball game against the Phillies yesterday. How about a solo, a solo shot here to tie things up? 
Boozers 01 pitch is in there. Call it strike. A generous call, I believe. A generous looking call, and I can already see how this game is about to end. The Orioles are about to lose their sixth spring game. They're going to fall to 20 and 6. I'll let you know how this final out goes. We know it's a fly ball. It's to right field, and there it is. The right fielder making the catch, and the ball game is over. Boozer pitches an easy ninth inning. Booze it up, Boozer. The Red Sox win this one. Final score, 3-2. Three, three runs, eight hits, one error for Boston. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the Orioles. Boston left 10 men on base. The Orioles left on six. Uh, winners and losers, who cares? I need to get out of here. <laughs> uh, Anthony Santander, for you Oriole fans, probably had the uh, big game at the plate with a couple of hits, including a double. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle, who came back yesterday after being off for about a week with a neck sprain. He had a hit in this one. Uh, otherwise, yeah, Jackson Holiday went 0 for 2. He came, on, on, he came in about halfway through the game. Westberg, for some reason, hidden the cleanup spot and went 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Suarez making the case to be uh, the long man for us. And uh, I, like, I, I like his stuff. He's got strikeout stuff. And today he went uh, four and a third, four hits, and one walk. Striking out three, gave up the one run. He's got a spring ERA of 2.08. I will take that to the bank. Okay, folks. Well, it's not easy. I got plenty to learn. That's what it's all about with these spring games. Trying to work on my game just as much as these uh, players are theirs. And I can tell already that this uh, sunlight, like yesterday at this time, it was overcast. So the sun wasn't so bright. But yeah, it just creates a backlight situation. Putting me in dark. I'm going to have to get a, a ring light. I'm going to have to get one of those lights. Uh, and also, yeah, the stream. What is going on with that? Okay, I'm, I'm out of here, guys. I am exhausted. Thanks for uh, hanging out. The two people that might be here right now, and maybe you're both sleeping. I don't know. Have a good night's sleep. Hey, I got the double-digit likes. I did it. I did it. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. This has been the Bird Watcher, and I will chirp at you 